There has been a lot of interest in building agents that can interact with structured data from, for example, BigQuery. And a lot of people have asked me how to do so using Agent Builder on Google Cloud. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a agent that can work with structured data in BigQuery. So let's get started. So I have a simple data set in BigQuery here. This is the Dlook e-commerce data set. It's a public data set you can get access to as well. It's basically an e-commerce type data set with tables like events, inventory items, orders, etc. We can take a look at what it looks like here. For example, for the orders table, we have information about orders with status, uh, shipment information, and stuff like that. So let's say we want to have an agent or a chatbot that answers questions related to this data. So the first thing that you notice if you navigate to, to Agent Builder is that when you create an app and choose either the chat option or the agent option and you build an agent and in that agent you try to create a data store You'll notice that there is no BigQuery option here as a data store. That's because you cannot use it for agent or chat conversation type applications. But what you can do is create a search type application with a BigQuery data store, and that is exactly what I did here for this app. And here, if I type a search query, what we get here is basically a list of roles that match my search query. And it's basically a structured view here on the results that match Shul's order. Now, as you can see, this is not a really super useful search application because most useful questions you can ask a database will not be answered with a list of roles like this. You typically need to do some kind of aggregation. You need to run a SQL query to join data together, filter, aggregate and do the things that SQL queries do in order to actually answer useful questions. So there's a strong limitation in how the product works today. This could still be useful if you have a table where information is self-contained in a role. So for example, if this happened to be a table of blog articles, this could still be useful. But for these type of applications, it's not really a super helpful search application. However, there is a solution to that. But before we talk about what that is, let's talk about how we would use this data store in a conversation type application. So for that, let's head over to Agent Builder. And here I have configured a simple agent already with a very simple goal and set of instructions. The instruction is basically if the user asks a question, employ this tool here. And this tool is not a data store tool because that wouldn't allow us to use BigQuery as a source, but it is in fact an open API type tool. So let's take a look. So the tool is really only calling an API, which I have implemented as a cloud function, because what I did is that I used the Vertex CI search API to interact with the search application that I created for my BigQuery data. And we can use this API as a tool that the agent can call to obtain results from that data store. So I have this open API specification here based on how the tool works in terms of what inputs and outputs it gives. And you get access to this in the GitHub repository linked in the description. And I also have the source code for the function here, which we we'll also have in the GitHub repo. So what the function is doing is basically taking a search query in the request body, and it is using the discovery engine SDK, which is the one you use to interact with Vertex AI search applications in data store. And it runs the search query against that BigQuery data store and just sends the results back to the caller. So then my agent will have access to the search results and you can use that to construct a response. So that's really all I did for this agent. So let's now configure some examples by going over to the examples tab here and clicking on create new. So I'll call this example one. And here we just need a summary of the agent execution result. 
and we need to add our interactions here. So let's begin with the user input, which let's say was shoes orders. And then we need to add a tool use. And here we expect a search query. And this is pre-populated because of how I define my OpenAPI specifications. So now what I'm going to do is that I'll test this function with this query just to see what the result looks like exactly. So I can go over here to testing. And I already populated this with this sample query. And Google Cloud give us the curl command to run this against an authenticated API. We can also click on running Cloud Shell and that will run the command for us and we can see here what the response from the tool would be for that query. Just so we have real high fidelity examples. So this is the response. I'm just going to copy the whole content here and I'll paste it in here. Now we need to add the action, which is the agent response. And as you can tell, it's difficult to construct a response from this because of the limitation that I talked about before. But let's say all of this agent is going to do is basically pass back all of this content to the user. And that's our example. Now we can test our agent. I'm going to choose Gemini Flash as the model. And now we got a response here, which is exactly what the tool responded with for this query. So we got three search results and the agent is basically following the examples here and responding in the same way that I did. So this is how you would integrate a BigQuery data store with Agent Builder. However, like I promised earlier in the video, there is a better way of working with BigQuery data if you don't have information that is easily self-contained in the world and you really need the SQL queries to run and aggregations to happen before you can produce a response. So for that, what we need to create is a natural language to SQL type agent and what I've done is that I created a second function. And here what it does is that it connects to specific tables that I have in BigQuery and it will take a natural language queries just like before, but now it's going to use Gemini to generate the SQL query based on the prompts template that I define here in these two files. I'll explain why there's a second one here in a moment. The SQL query generated from Gemini is then used to actually call BigQuery and obtain the results. And by the way, you can see some methods here that I used to obtain the schema and some sample rules to include in the prompt so Gemini knows what the data looks like. And basically after I do all that, I run a reflect on generated SQL. This is basically the reflection agentic pattern or introspective pattern, if you will, where we have a second prompt, look at the response from the first one from the model and basically correct any mistakes. So just to give you a quick view at the prompts here and you have all of this in the GitHub repo, but basically the generation prompt asks for the SQL query based on the schemas and sample rules and what the user question was. And the reflection prompt asks to review that query for mistakes and for correctness to validate that it's actually answering the question. Just a way to improve performance of the generated queries. So finally, the function will return the results from book query in a JSON object like so. And our agent can then use it to give a better response to any kind of question. So to illustrate this, I have created another agent that I call the SQL agent with a very similar goal and set of instructions. 
but this time I'm using this natural language to SQL tool which corresponds to the function that I just showed you. So the setup of the agent here is basically very similar. I also already created two examples here to help guide the model behavior. So let's take a look at how this one works. I'm going to ask for, first I need to select my agent here and the model and I'll ask And here I got a markdown table exactly as shown from the tool output here. So again, this natural language question was translated to a SQL query by the model. And then the SQL query was run against BigQuery. And we got the results converted to markdown. And that is the output. And the agent is giving me the table. Now I'm going to ask a second question where the answer is a number. So for example, and now we get a number. So more of a natural language response as opposed to a table. And this is because in my example, if there were only one response, one row, pretty much like this, then I told the agent to just give a response based on that result. Otherwise, just pass back the table as it is in the tool's output. So as you can see, this simulator panel here doesn't really render markdown uh, strings very well. So this doesn't look super appealing. But if you were building this agent with your own user interface, which you probably should, then you can have that markdown string be rendered and displayed in a nice way. So that could be a good way of working with a SQL agent or an agent that does other things beyond SQL queries. If all you really need is to have a bot that can answer questions from data, you can also run this function as a standalone application. To do so, all you have to do is run the main.py file using mesop, and this will create a user interface with an input field here where it can ask questions to the agent and the output tables will be much nicely formatted. So this could be a nice web interface to work with the agent. And by the way, I also added a prompt endpoint here that you can go to see and edit the prompts that are used for prompting the models and you can save any changes that you make here. If you're unfamiliar with Mesop, that's Google's version of Streamlit or Gradio. It's a similar kind of app. I would encourage you to check out the documentation, which I'll link in the video description. That's it for this video and thank you for watching.